Once we've learned about functions, the next logical step is to learn about recursion. Recursion involves calling the same function over and over again, kind of in a spiral, a function calling itself, calling itself in order to solve a really complicated problem. How does a function calling itself help us? Each time a function calls itself, it breaks the problem further down till we are left with the very smallest unit and then it's easy to solve for that very small unit. We take the solution for the smallest unit and then build it at back up till we've got the solution for the entire problem. Sound complicated? It is. But it's also elegant and beautiful and an easy solution for many complicated problems. Let's see an example. Work at the example without recursion and then see how recursion can help us. Let's say that we had to write a program to reverse the characters in a string. A string is passed into a function and we want the output of that function to reverse the characters that exist in that string. So that function returns another string which has the characters reversed. Sound simple? Yes it is and it can definitely be done without recursion. So basically what we want is a function called reverse string and it takes in some input. Let's assume that that input is a, B, C, 1, 2, 3. That is the string we want to input into this function. The return value we want for this input is 3, 2, 1, C, B, A. That is the reverse string. Now suppose the input was simply A. We have a single character string. The output, it's logical, should simply be A. Let's see the step in, steps involved in solving this problem. What we can do is to interchange the first and last characters of the string. So we do a simple swap where after the swap, the first character becomes the last character and the last character becomes the first. And then we interchange the second and the second last characters of the string. So we kind of moved inwards and the second character becomes the second last and the second last becomes the second. We keep going like this till we reach the middle of the string. So we've kind of started at the edges and then we are moving towards the center. Imagine both your hands moving from the edge towards the center of the string. At, when we reach the center of the string, all pairs of characters would have been interchanged. This is true because whether the string is of odd or even length, we would have exchanged all pairs of characters. Now this is one possible way of solving this problem. What would this involve? We'd probably use a for loop to iterate over the string and for every iteration of the loop, we'd perform one exchange. Sounds simple enough, it's easy to imagine this. This is a solution using a for loop. And a string, if you really think about it, is simply a list of characters. So what we are doing is iterating over the list of characters and going about performing these swaps. This is an iterative solution to this problem. We've solved the reverse string function using an iterative solution. Let's see another solution to this problem. What we can do is when we first receive the input string, we split the string into two parts. These are not 
equal parts. The first part is simply the first character of the string. And the second part is all the remaining characters of the string. And then, so that's the first thing we do in this function. We split it into two parts with the first part containing only the first characters and the rest of it containing all the other characters except the first. Then we reverse the second part of the string. Once the second part of the string is reversed, we simply take the first part and append it to the end of the reversed part. kind of complicated so we have the first part reverse the second part of the string we have a fully reversed part string except the very first character which we append to the end of the reversed second part and then we return the result hmm does this sound complicated it is let's see the input is a, B, C, 1, 2, 3. That's the string that we've passed into this algorithm. So the first part of the string is A and the rest of the string is B, C, 1, 2, 3. So far, so good. Suppose we can reverse the second part of the string. We will get 3, 2, 1, C, B. Let's not worry about how we reverse the second part of the string. Needless to say, if we reversed it, if we managed to do it, we'll get 3 to 1 CB. Append the first part, that is the A, to this reverse string. Does that look like a completely reverse string to you? Yes. The result that we get will be 3 to 1 CBA. And that is what we'll return. So if you break up this problem in this manner, you see that you get the result. There is a question here though, one important thing. How do we reverse the second part of the string? How do we magically find a way to reverse one part of the string? And the answer is kind of tricky here. The answer is that we'll simply use the same reverse string function. We've just written the logic for the reverse string function. We'll continue to use this to reverse the string. Hmm. How does that even work and how to prevent this from going on forever? You can simply keep calling reverse string over and over again. How do you end? And the way to end is to add a condition to the very beginning that if the string has just one or fewer characters, the reversed string is the string itself. So think about it. At one point, as you keep breaking the string and into pieces and reversing the rest of the string, the rest of the string will probably just contain one character at some point. At that point, the reversed string is just that single character itself. So you'll just add at the very beginning of this series of steps that if the string is of length one or zero, don't go ahead with the rest of the actions of splitting the string. The return value is the string itself. A string of length 1, for example, if the input were A, the return value would also be A. So you know the solution for an input length of 1. And then you know how to append these strings together to get the final solution. This is the recursive solution to this problem. 
still confused yes it takes a little while to wrap one's head around recursion so the best thing to do right now is to take a look at how the solution works diagrammatically on each iteration when the function is called again so each time the function is called let's see what the inputs and the outputs are and you'll be able to understand it better we'll work with a simple example where the string passed in is simply abc and the return value that we expect is cba this box represents one call to the reverse string function we pass in abc as our very first input and that's what reverse string sees the first call to the function the input argument is abc and it's passed to reverse string so what does it do now it takes abc and splits it into two parts the first part is simply a and then the rest is the rest of the string which in our case is bc and then we call reverse string on bc so we hold a and we pass in bc as an input to our second call to reverse string so we are calling reverse string again now but the input to that is just bc what do we do now we split the string the first part just contains b and the rest of the string c is passed to reverse string again so the third time we call reverse string the input argument is just c this is when the base case kicks in we know that when the length of the string is just 1 we return the string itself so when c is passed in c is the return value to the second call of reverse string so now at this point we are back in the second call and that has received c what do we do here we take the string which is c in this case and append b to it we add b to the very end and return it which means what gets returned to the very first call is c b what do we do in our very first call to reverse string once more we take the result the return value that we've gotten and append the part we are holding that is a to it we add it to the end and we get c b a notice this is the completely reversed string that we were expecting it's almost magical how re recursion works in our third call because the string was 3 characters long the base case kicked in here because the input argument of c had just a length of 1 a string which is just one character long the re the reversed part of it is just the character itself so recursion seems complicated but it's a very intuitive elegant way of solving problems once you start thinking recursively very complex problems can have simple 3 4 line solutions take some getting used to though let's quickly summarize what we just learned we've seen that iterative solutions generally involve for loops and performing a whole bunch of actions in these for loops recursive solutions involves having a function which calls itself over and over again with smaller and smaller inputs functions call themselves when a program is written using recursion it takes in an input breaks in the input into smaller pieces 
so splits that input in some way and then calls itself on a smaller input so it takes in an input splits it and then calls itself on the smaller parts and once it gets the return value from the smaller part it combines the output now there will be a point where the input is so small that the solution to it is trivial it doesn't need to be broken down any further if the inputs to the function are too simple to split further that is when recursion stops the recursive function will not call itself but instead return a simple output this special case when the input is so simple that it can't be broken down further and has a simple return value is called the base case of the recursion it has a special name it's called the base case of the recursion in the example that we just saw we had a base case which involved returning the string itself it is this base case which prevents the recursion from going on indefinitely so the check there which says if the string is of length is 1 or 0 return the string itself that is the base case of our recursion I'll repeat what I said early on in this class. Recursion is a pretty powerful idea. There are a whole family of problems which can seem really difficult to solve iteratively. The computation involved in solving them iteratively can be huge. But they are really intuitive and simple when you manage to think about them recursively and write a recursive solution. In my head I think of recursion a little bit like mathematical induction in math. You figure out the very base case, the unit solution which is easy and the larger solution builds itself. 